Hey Code Crew, let me ask you a question. How do apps let you create an account and login with your Facebook or Google credentials? Here's another one. How does your favorite weather app get today's weather forecast? The answer to both of these questions, they talk to other systems to get the data or to verify your credentials. And the way that these two systems talk to each other is through something called an API or application programming interface. An API simply states the rules for the communication to happen. For example, if you're applying for a passport, you can't just go to the printing facilities and make yourself a passport. There's a certain procedure that you have to follow. You fill out the forms, you take a photo, you take these documents to a passport office, and you talk to the lady and you hand in your documents, you pay the fee, and then you wait. You have no idea what's happening behind the scenes once you hand in your documents. The system took your inputs, it's working in the back, and when it's ready, it'll produce your passport and give it to you. This is exactly like how an API works. The passport production process is the system that we want to communicate with. We can't access the internals of the system. We can only talk to the API layer, which in this case is the lady at the counter at the passport office. This is known as an endpoint which just means that she's a point of contact for us to submit our inputs. With each endpoint, there is a protocol about what inputs are required and what result you'll get in return. If you don't supply the correct inputs, then your request will get rejected. Normally, you'll also have to supply an API key with your request, which is just a unique ID to identify your app. This way, the system has a record of who is accessing its endpoints. Now imagine that different systems will each have their own API with different endpoints and different protocols for each endpoint about what inputs are required. Your app can communicate and interact with all of these different systems through their respective APIs. Luckily, all APIs will have some sort of documentation describing how to communicate with the endpoints. And some systems won't have an API, so you won't be able to talk to that system at all. Now let's see a more concrete example of working with an API. Oh yeah, one quick thing. Today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs, free block storage and free snapshots for an entire year. In addition to that, get $25 in free credits to use on any other services they offer. Try Atlantic.net to develop, test or launch your next project. Ease of use is something that I like as it frees up my mind to focus on coding. I also like that they have round the clock phone support so if I happen to get stuck, I can contact them easily. So visit atlantic.net slash code with Chris and enter the code Chris to get your $25 free credit. These guys are great, give them a try. And don't forget to use the coupon code Chris to get $25 in free credit. That's an exclusive offer just for you guys. Now let's go through an example with an actual API. This is news API where you can get the top headlines uh, and news articles from a variety of different sources. Uh, and this is an API that we actually work with inside of my courses. Now uh, let's take a look at the endpoints that are available through news API. So this one gives you all articles about Bitcoin in the last month sorted by the most recent first. This URL is the endpoint and it gives you everything these are the inputs these parameters here so they're querying for bitcoin right and they you can supply a date range and then you can also supply a sort uh, what field you want to sort by so they want to sort by published date and finally the last parameter uh, that you have to input is an api key now, this is actually my API key because I am logged in. And so if I hit this endpoint right here and pass in these inputs, they would know that I did this. And they would have a record of that and they can identify who is accessing their API. Before I actually uh, hit this API endpoint, let's take a look at another endpoint. Now, this one you can see is a little different and it gives the top headlines. So I guess it's the top news for today um, and here they're specifying different inputs they're putting in the country a category just business and then again you have to supply your api key to access 
Now here they're using that same endpoint from our first example that's called everything. And this applying a query called apple from to this is a date range sort by popularity this time. So let's try one of these API calls. So all I have to do is just put it into my browser like that. And so I'm hitting this newsapi.org v2 everything endpoint and I'm passing in these inputs and I'm also passing in my API key. So when I hit enter, I make that request to that endpoint and I get back these results according to the parameters that I've specified. And this data format is called JSON, which we'll go through in the next video next week. Um, but it's in a data format that I can parse and process and I can extract this information to use inside my app. So you can see each of these articles I can, uh, it's surrounded by these brackets here. I won't get too much into it, but um, each of them has well-defined fields called author, title, description, URL, URL to image, publish that, and actual content. Um, and so it makes it very easy to grab each piece of information for each article and then format it inside my app and display it inside a scrollable list or something. So now you understand what an API is. Well, what's an SDK? SDK stands for Software Development Kit. These are usually bits of code that will make it easier for you to work with an API. So some systems will have an API and offer an SDK that you can download and use in your project, which will make it easier for you to work with that particular API. There are thousands of APIs out there and you can browse through them through API directories like this one at Programmable Web. I actually think this is one of the largest API directories. So if there's a particular API that you want to see a demo of, please leave a comment below and I'll take a look at it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate you and I'll see you next time.